In grade 10, there was no such thing as internal resistance. So what is internal resistance? Well, let me explain. In a real, no, not a real, in an ideal world where there is no such thing as internal resistance, you would go to a shop and you would buy yourself a 9 volt battery. You would then connect your little 9 volt battery over here and you would put your, you would switch your circuit on and you would then connect your red and your black crocodile clips over there. So in real life it would be this type of device. And guess what? On the screen you would have 9 volts. Perfect. You went to the shops, you buy a 9 volt battery and now it's 9 volts. If you then had to go measure V2, maybe that would be 2 volts, V3 would be 5, and then V4 would be 2 volts. So that when you added each of those up, you would get to 9 volts. So life is perfect. But in real life it doesn't work out this way. What happens instead is the following. When you go connect your battery to the circuit and you measure the battery itself, so you use this type of device and you connect it there and there, your battery says, it, well the reading says 8 volts. But you purchased a 9 volt battery. The reason for that is internal resistance. Okay, so you've got 8 volts available, so you can see that that's a 1 volt, that's 5 volts, and that's 2 volts. So that does add up to 8, and so that 8 volts is what you are able to use in your circuit. So what happens to that 1 volt? Because you purchased a 9 volt battery, you're only getting 8 volts for your circuit. That other 1 volt is called the lost volts. As the name implies, it's lost. You can't get it back. The reason is, is the following. We said about two lessons ago that voltage can also be explained in terms of the amount of energy that gets given to each coulomb of charge. So let's say charges start at the back of the battery and they make their way through the battery like this. Let me actually draw this a little bit bigger. So let's say the electrons or the charges, they start at the back of the battery and because it's a 9 volt battery, each little charge will be given 9 joules of energy. That's what it means. 9 joules of energy per charge. Now that little charge is trying to get through the battery to get to the other side so that it can start the journey around the circuit. But because of this thing called internal resistance, think about it, inside a battery there's a whole lot of stuff. There's chemicals, there's atoms, and those atoms are going to get in the way of your electrons. So when the electrons are busy going through, they're going to bump, oh sorry buddy, sorry, sorry, just coming through. As they're busy going through, they're going to knock into those chemicals. And so that by the time they get out of the battery, they have already lost one joule of energy. And so they only have eight joules of energy remaining for the rest of the circuit. So in grade 10, we pretended that there was no internal resistance. So if nine joules of energy was given to the electron, then when it got to the end of the battery, it also had nine joules, so that when it went around the circuit, it was able to use nine and not eight. And so you could almost think of it like this. You could think of having a perfect battery, and then you could just add a tiny little resistor over here. So that's almost what it's like. It doesn't matter if the resistor, you put it in the battery, or if it's just on the outside of the battery. So pretty much the difference between grade 10 and 11 is that in grade 10, the battery doesn't have a resistance. In grade 11, the battery does have a resistance. Is it going to make things more difficult? Not at all. It's just a little, it's, it's like adding an extra light bulb, but the light bulb is inside the battery. There's, it's going to be super easy. So what we're going to say now in grade 11 is that this 9 volts, which is the battery's voltage, it's the maximum that it could ever give, and we wish we could get the 9 volts, that's going to be called the EMF. So that EMF is the total, total volts that your battery can ever give. It will never give that because of internal resistance. And so we know that EMF is going to be used for the voltage 
on the external part of the circuit which is where we actually want it but then unfortunately we're also going to use some of the volts internally and that's inside the battery itself so in the previous example that was the 9 the external was the 8 and the internal was the 1 the internal is the voltage that we don't want we would like to have 9 on the outside that's why we went and purchased a 9 volt battery like just imagine a group of people watching a soccer match for example and just before the game is about to start they realize that the remote the TV remote is flat so John goes to the shop and he buys a 9 volt battery he comes back home plugs it into the remote and it doesn't work Tim their nerdy friend then does a quick analysis and realizes silly old John didn't take internal resistance into account I mean who does that how can you not take internal resistance into account? Okay, so I'm just being very silly now. So that doesn't happen in real life. Um, if you go buy a 9 volt, if you, if you just go buy normal batteries for a remote, it'll work. There is a bit of internal resistance, but you're not going to end up with a problem like that. And so this is going to be a very important formula that you're going to want to remember. In grade 10, the EMF of the battery was the same as the external. So if you purchased a 9 volt battery, then you got 9 volts. And so I'm going to go a little bit further now with this. So we know that the symbol for EMF is just going to be an E. Now voltage external, we usually calculated that using IR. We're still going to do that now. But now the internal resistance of the battery, well that's also going to be I, but we're going to use a small r. So Kevin, are you saying that they both use the same I? Yes. I stands for current and we know that the speed of the electrons stays the same even when even going through the battery the speed stays the same even when you are going through the battery so the current stays the same the only time that current splits is when now I'm hoping some of you at home says when you are in parallel it's only in parallel that's when your current splits and so you might have seen your teacher doing this type of formula over here and then if they super cool they might have taken out a common factor of I and then you would just be left with R plus R so you can use this formula this one or this one the bottom one is given to you on the formula sheet the main thing you need to take away from this lesson is that because of internal resistance the voltage that it says on the battery is going to be split up where most of it will go externally thank goodness because that's what we want and then some of it unfortunately is going to be used inside the battery and that's the stuff that we don't want then EMF can be symbolized using an E and then we know that external voltage we've always calculated that using IR where R is the total resistance on the external part of the circuit so that would be this this and this and then you have to remember internal voltage which has its own little resistor which is inside the battery. Thanks for watching.